And now we are here with the latest episode in the Permission to Do You in Your Marketing series, Permission to Do You in Your Marketing in Your Copy. So I'm very excited to have all of my guests here with me today. We have an amazing, amazing crew of ladies. Um, if you guys are watching us live, please feel free to share that you are doing that. <laughs> Say hello. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to ask them. This is a conversation that we are here to have. And we want to have a conversation with as many people as possible. One thing I will note also for our friends joining us live on the Zoom, just in case you don't want your face recorded, we'd love to have your face recorded. But this is being recorded and it's going on YouTube. So if you don't want your face recorded, just turn your camera off. <laughs> Our panelists don't have that option, <laughs> but um, also any of you guys who are watching us live on Zoom, please feel free to ask any questions that you have or share any comments that you have on the conversation in the chat box. We would love, love, love to do that. Um, our panelists have also popped their contact information in there already. So if you fall in love with any panelists, then you can reach out to them and tell them that you love them and you can start social media stalking them later. Um, Awesome. Let's get started with some introductions. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Tracy Borison, the host of this beautiful series, and I am all about personal branding. So the concept of permission to do you came from a lot of work that I do with my clients where people, for some odd reason, seem to need permission from someone else to be themselves. <laughs> And as silly as I believe that is, because you guys should all just be yourself all the time. That's what I believe. I don't know if everybody believes that themselves. And so I am here to give you the permission to do that. And we are here to give you some ways to do that, specifically this evening in your copy. So I am just going to go in order of how our guests are on my screen, um, which is probably different on everybody else's screen. So if it looks crazy, it's just Tracy's crazy way of doing it. And we're going to start with Sarah. So Sarah, could you please give us a little intro to who you are and what you're all about? Yeah, absolutely. I am a content strategist most, um, but I did start out as a copywriter or content writer at, at the beginning of my freelancing journey, which was about three years ago. Now I've kind of shifted more into that business owner role as I think we all have all freelancers experience. So now I work mostly in LinkedIn marketing and organic content marketing. So that includes Facebook, blogs, websites, that sort of stuff. But I'd say my expertise is LinkedIn. Oh, my mute is going crazy. That is awesome because I am all about LinkedIn and I'm excited to hear your perspective on LinkedIn in particular. So also stay tuned, anybody who is excited about LinkedIn. All right, let's go to Amy. Amy, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're all about. All right. Um, well, I've been freelancing for freelance copywriting for about 20 years as a sideline gig. And uh, just last August, got fed up with the corporate world and said, enough, I'm done. And decided to make this my full-time gig. Um, so I've been at it full-time for about a year and have learned a great deal in that year. As Sarah said about being a business owner as opposed to just a copywriter. I've been a business owner all along, but I haven't had to do nearly as much. <laughs> when you're doing one job a month or two jobs a month, it's like, oh, that takes care of itself. Not so much when you're doing it full-time. Um, but as far as the, the branding and, and doing you, I really enjoy working one-on-one -on -one with clients. I work almost in more of a coaching role, um, where I help them learn how to do their own copywriting when they don't know how to write. I think this is so important and that's, I, I think we'll, we'll probably have some conversation around that today about writing yourself versus outsourcing your copy and when's the right time to do that and all of those good things. Um, and this is so great, the diversity that we have, different people doing different parts of the journey. So great. Um, okay, Lindsay, your turn. Yay. Hi, I'm Lindsay. <laughs> I'm Lindsay. I'm like, who am I? I'm Lindsay Harrell Cadet. And yeah, so I come at content from a wee bit of a different perspective. So I am the owner of The Right Harl, which is my brand strategy company, um, coming from marketing, content writing, all that jazz from a long time ago. However, 
in that branding work that I've done with clients, what I found would get us the best copy was when I made them really help me understand what their brand voice was, specifically those values, specifically what those values in actions were, uh, what those values in action were. And since then, I've now become a values vixen and I work with clients to hone it. Ooh, oh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> to hone in on their values and really understand how the heck do you define a value so it's not a fluffy marketing statement, but a tangible uh, tool that you can use to inform your copy and what you want to write and how you can use that to make your voice yours in your content. And that's me in a wee nutshell. And Lindsay likes to use the word we a lot. So I use the word a lot we of a lot. We things today. <laughs> All right, round us out, Shauna. Beautiful. Yeah, and actually it is kind of like a perfect round circle because um, just like Lindsay, you know, I, I like to help people to figure out where their uh, brand voice is with regards to their values, um, except in, in the context in, I wouldn't say except, but as well as the context in which they want to make an impact by using their voice and their personal brand within the context of their if they're copywriting um so i'm always asking people to show up whole i'm always coaching people to come to uh, a place where they can confidently press that post button because i know it's so dang hard when you have this fear of being judged um and then too uh we understand that copy is a very integral part of our entire content strategy because in every single aspect of how you're showing up online we want to make sure that we're having that call to action even if it is a soft, soft one um, so, you know, I, I kind of, I, I actually love the way this kind of turned out because uh, we are all in the same boat and it's beautiful. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of uh, the space in which I reside. <laughs> all of them, that is. <laughs> all of the spaces. <laughs> I think this is so, there's going to be so many things for us to talk about today. I will do my best to keep us on time. Um, also because I know for some of you it's quite late and we want to be respectful of bedtimes. Um, all right, so before we get deep, deep into the conversation, I would love to give each of you an opportunity to share an example of where it was very clear to you in a piece of copy that you wrote that your personal brand was shining through. Now, I know there's a couple members of you who are in the Your Business Peeps community, and we just did this challenge, so it might be a little bit easier for you guys. Um, but there are, I mean, even personally myself, there's been times where I post, and it's something it's something I believe because I personally don't post anything. I don't believe, I feel like if I don't believe strongly something today, I don't post. Um, but there's some of those things that are just like, this says everything about me. And I just feel really good about this. Um, so maybe I'll get Shauna to go first just because I know Shauna just did. Um, she's an expert in the Your Business Peace community and just participated in this challenge. Um, so you can kick us off and help give people some ideas. Um, but what's an example of that for you, Shauna? Yeah, uh, well, you know, pretty much anything where I share about my children is a really big example of that. I speak about that in my program, On Your Originality and uh, Mastermind Intensive, where um, I show that, you know, no matter where you're coming from, it's going to have something, if you're in alignment, it's going to have something to do with your business and it's going to resonate really, really deeply with you. So a lot of times um, the one that uh, well, I shared too for that challenge, um, but the one that I remember you pointing out was um, my children, we went to this new park and it was a really cool park. And it was just like in my mind's eye, it was just above their um, like play level. You know what I mean? Like, like it was challenging to them but they weren't daunted, right? They went and they were like, I'm climbing up. <laughs> and they freaking climbed the damn thing. I was like, are you kidding me? Look at you. You you did this thing that I, I would not have thought you could do, but you freaking did it. And that has to do with everything. You know, it, it, when it comes to showing up in your, your copywriting, people are so scared of being judged. People are so scared of, of taking that leap of showing up and trying that thing, whatever that thing is. So you want to make a real, make the freaking real right? Like do the thing. And, you know, while I was writing that, I just felt so in tune with everything about, you know, the tiny miracles that we see every day, um, the lessons we can learn from the children around us. Um, I'm, I'm a 
people often say that I'm just Mary Poppins person because like frequently I'm like, I'm opening my doors, children, come let's play. We've got a bowl of watermelon and a, a you know, it's uh, one of those slip and slides in the backyard. Let's go nuts. And, you know, or, or I rolled out one day, um, I'm the talking one, by the way, if you heard Tracy say, that's me. Um, I rolled out, I rolled out a big thing of paper and I set out a bunch of bins of paint and I invited all the neighborhood kids to just paint. Right, just go do that thing. That's me. So like that to me, like it's just so in alignment with all the things that bring me joy. You know that that youthful admiration of all things life, and then tying it back to what really matters. That's that makes my heart sing. And so, sharing anything with regards to that, just perfect. It's right in alignment. Oh, I think that that is such a great example to start out with because. I know that there's a lot of people, especially on LinkedIn. So maybe we'll jump to Sarah next if you're ready with an example, Sarah, because I know on LinkedIn, a lot of times we're like, it's the professional platform. We don't talk about our personal life. And like, quite honestly, (laughs) I posted this picture of me and my son at Disney World in front of the Millennium Falcon. And it's one of my favorite posts of me because I'm like, this says all my like nerd stuff and my family stuff. And like, you can see on my face that I just, I'm like at peace. Like this is my place, right? Like I'm surrounded by my people at my place with my family. What else could be better than that? Um, And it just is like, people see that real side of you. So I'd love to hear your example, Sarah, but I'd also love to hear a little bit of commentary around the LinkedIn professional balance. Yeah, I think it actually ties in really well with how I show up online personally. Um, I do want to make a note on what Shauna was just talking about, though, with like the little miracles that you see everything every single day. I tell my clients and like I tell anyone else, that's what I call content brain. You just kind of like get into this mode where you're like, you're not even really doing it intentionally, but you're like, that'd be a good post. Oh, that'd be a good post. Oh, I just had this interaction with this person where I had to like kind of confront them and say, hey, like, you don't have to be rude to me. Let's just have a conversation. And it's like, oh, that's a good post because sometimes you have to do that to your clients or, you know, et cetera. People showing up in your comments, God forbid you have that negativity in your comments, but it happens, you know? Um, and so linking that to the initial question, which is, you know, that that post or that that moment when you knew that you were, their personal brand was really shining. I got to say, I'm a contrarian and I like being a contrarian. I like to be that person that shows up and says, hey, you may think you should do it this way, but here's the way the way you should actually do it obviously coming from a place of things I can actually talk about. I never try to like talk on subjects that I know I don't know about or can't back myself up in. Again, in those comments, you know, if you, if you, if your first line in a piece of copy is, uh, hey, you're stupid, then people are going to get kind of like, you know, rubbed the wrong way. But I always do at the end, show up with that actionable content. You know, it's not just like, hey, you suck, you're bad, you do this wrong, da, 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 bye. But it's like, no, like, here's how I experienced that myself what I did to change that and the result. And then, you know, usually there's something useful there. Um, But I do that in Facebook groups too. I do that on LinkedIn comments as well. Like, I I wouldn't say I look for opportunities to be that kind of contrarian, but I also think that there aren't many people who, who do show up to say like, hey, actually I disagree and here's why. You know, um, it, it does link into that fear of being judged, of course, but I knew that my personal brand was showing when I just completely gave that up because I've, I'd always been that way. Like I've, I've, I was always the weird kid and um, I liked it. I thrived in being the weird kid. I thrived in being the kid that other kids were like, what the heck is they doing? Like, <laughs> and so I think, you know, with LinkedIn, that's finally starting to show up. Um, if you spend any time on LinkedIn at all, you will notice that personal posts are coming more into the you know hundred thousands likes etc memes tiktoks like those things are starting to show up on linkedin and i think it's because people are finally shedding that like i need to be a, a corporate professional guy and on linkedin and recruiting only and like we're humans like we are all humans And as more business owners realize the power behind LinkedIn, as more freelancers use it just to talk about their experiences and and gain clients authentically in that fashion, you realize everything is tied to your work. Everything is tied to your life. You know, like your work doesn't have to be everything, but it is a part of your life. Like, so to be able to show up authentically and wholly in that, and not wholly like, oh, but wholly as a whole person, um, (laughs) you 
and also holy too. Some mm. people are religious. Um, you can show that you're a real person and you're probably, you know, interesting to work with too. Yeah. No, oh, well, I heart all the things that you just said. <laughs> um, but I also really lot. love your example because oftentimes so when we think about things like being a contrarian, right? We might not get like super excited about like, ooh, I'm a contrarian. Like a lot of times in our history, people will have been like, that's bad, right? Like just like keep that to yourself <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but it's a superpower. And so like some of these things about being bossy or stubborn or that those are, those are ways of being. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if they're part of who you are, then hiding those is equally inauthentic, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not like authenticity isn't one thing. We're not all here to show up as identical things. And this is why I get frustrated with a, a lot of the offers around personal branding. And it's like, I'll just give you a personal brand. <laughs> I'm sorry. This, mm, I have a personal brand. You can't give me one. It, <laughs> I have to do. <laughs> Here is your identity. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and it's a bow. <laughs> right. But you guys, this is happening all over the place, especially in the, in the coaching spaces. People will just be like, well, this is how I was. And this is what I did to get, be successful in this arena. So if you just be exactly like me and do all the things I did, then you can do it too. And it, actually works for the people who are like that right? yeah. who, who right. naturally show up that way but it's not a thing that people this is why so many people go through coaching programs and they're just like oh that didn't work for me because you're trying to make me something I'm not you're not trying to make me who I am right you're not trying to emphasize who I am so that's I let this just a really great example because it's it's not about hiding those parts of us that might be controversial, right? It's about embracing all of those things and doing it with respect, but mm -hmm. doing it because if, if you don't, mm -hmm. you and this is another thing. And I'm gonna get to Lindsay's name too before <laughs> I talk too much, but ignoring that is equally inauthentic, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sure we've all had those experiences too, where we're like, I had this on the weekend actually. I saw a post and I was just like, I don't believe this and I was like do I say because you always have the option right like yeah, I was an option to not say anything and I scrolled past it and I went back because I was like no I, I can't in good conscience say nothing right this is something that I think needs to be a bigger conversation and people are forgetting a like very important piece of and like, quite honestly, the person who like made the post, like went off on me and called me some horrible names. And I went back on it and, and I was like, you know what? I don't regret doing that because I gave, I gave that person an opportunity to see things differently. That person had no interest in seeing things differently, which I can't control, mm -hmm. but I don't know who else is going to look at the comments, right? I don't know who else is going to see that and needed that today. I just couldn't like, I would have felt bad inside if I hadn't said something. And so again, assuming that you're coming from a place of <laughs> respect, um, I don't think there's anything you really can't say. Um, mm. if yeah. It feels right. And the way that I perceive it too, kind of like switching that brain from like, don't be a contrarian ever to like something that's more positive and marketing based is the reality of all content marketing is you're trying to start a conversation. So if you do that in a fashion where people are like, well, you're still starting a conversation and you still have this opportunity to explain yourself and back mm -hmm. yourself up and show your expertise. So. Yes. And this is where we build relationships and actual conversations. So this is important. Well, I think it's also, are you being contrarian or are you just being curious mm -hmm. with presenting another viewpoint? Mm -hmm. And I think that just opens itself up to more conversation anyways yeah pardon me i know that this is a good point because anything any action can be seen as different so like the lady whose post i commented yesterday on facebook her assumption was that i was trying to start a fight Mm -hmm. my response is like you must not know me very well because I, like, it's, it's, 
not what I do. Um, and actually had like someone else earlier in the week tell me I'm specifically in the same conversation, like in the same kind of rapper that I was like, yes, thank you for saying that. That's so interesting, different perspective, right? And so it, to me, it was just like somebody who's coming at the receipt, who's receiving my content from a growth minded perspective in that contrarian or curious state. Like what if we thought about it differently versus somebody who's coming from a defensive position and people in defensive positions for whatever reason, but I can't control it. Right. And I also don't necessarily know that they're in a defensive position until I do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, Oh, wow. I didn't expect that to happen. (laughs) We were just going to have like a really, I'm like, it was a, it was a sensitive topic, right? Like it's societal justice type of topic. And I'm like, huh, I think this, and like, I partially agreed and then partially challenged, right? But like, oh, this is not, this was not the space where we can have a a learning conversation. (laughs) And I did not know that. And now I will go somewhere else to have a learning conversation. Um, But it's also one of the things that I know that happened specifically for me in that scenario too, was when someone comes back at you with that kind of response and you're just like, ooh, that's not about me, (laughs) right? Like Mm -mm. that's about them. Um, I can't control them. I can't control their perspective and their framing and all of those things. And to me, that's also one of the greatest powers in actual personal branding or the, the wrapper of today's package of permission to do you is that when you get that back and you know that what they think you're doing is like that, that's not me, right? Like this is what, and sometimes I do it wrong, right? Like sometimes I use the wrong words. I don't believe in the right words. So like every once in a while you can use the wrong words. And it's just like, there's an opportunity to learn. There's an opportunity to grow all the time and, but not in every conversation. (laughs) Um, So just, it's it's this important point for people to keep in mind because you can only, when you're creating content, you still only control you, right? Mm -hmm. You, You don't get to control how people receive it and you don't control what they think and you can't <laughs> so right there's freedom in that <laughs> oh, shucks <sighs> all right Lindsay, do you have a, a, an example that you'd like to share with us uh, you know i do but i'm not it's not necessarily so i'm not going to talk about the posting on linkedin or the social or anything because what i'm thinking about right now was when I started to lean into my values, how much more easier the blogging became. Um, And this is because I I come from a very corporate world. And so even though I started my own copywriting business back in 2011, it really wasn't until 2020 when I fully pulled the stick out that I was able to flow with my writing. And that's because I leaned into my values understanding what is this? What, because writing for ourselves, even if it's just uh, like a mental brain dump, shouldn't be that difficult. When we know what we stand for, when we know what's important to us. And so what I had to do really was understand why is this corporate world that I'm still in, in my voice? How would I write if I'm just Lindsay? How do I remove all of corporate Calgary and all the corporate clients that I've written for from my own brain so I can just write as Lindsay? And that really came back to getting down and defining my values and then understanding what my content pillars were so I could filter my values through that. But I can very distinctly remember just how tight, like even if you go to my website, which we're not going to talk about, but when if you go to my website, like the older blogs pre-20, 20 um are very stiff and yeah they have a little bit of that humor that Lindsay I'm not sure why I'm bouncing but there's a little bit of that humor Lindsay but you can still tell that oh she's very corporate and then all of a sudden there's a switch and you can see these are the way more impactful blogs that have greater impact plot impact that's not a word that have greater impact that focus on the story that bring life because all of a sudden I understood what I as a business stood for how I could share that with my writers at at them how I could share that with my clients and make specifically content blogging interesting 
and because not to be not to be all but not a lot it's interesting to some people but not all uh business owners who need to know about content are interested in reading about content so how do we make that more interesting and then i would use stories and fun stuff and that was a big change and that then is what has allowed me to step into my real voice step into those values so that i can show up in social media um is me it is me this these are not oh my golly i need to should have brought the wine um as myself right but i think that's a big piece too is for uh, the entrepreneurs who were always thinking we need to create consistent content and have consistent content on our websites is when we're committing to content do we know what um what's hindering us from writing as ourselves and for me it was all that corporate world not that it's bad because my, my writing was good, but boring as F. <laughs> so, so I think that's the biggest thing is when we start to write as ourselves, we have to understand what is our voice. And if there's that struggle to get our voice in that flow state, not the editing state, but in that flow state, then there's a, then we got to work through that belief or that limiting belief, that challenge that's holding us so we can move forward into ours. And I know for me, it really leaned into those. I don't know why I punched my desk. I was finding those values and understanding what values I needed to write on. And I could wave that through. This is a lot of talking of Lindsay with voices now. So we're just going <laughs> to anyway. So not not the social, but if we start on that thicker meatier content, it becomes so much easier than to do the delicious seasoning content. I think one of the interesting things that you just touched on briefly there as well was the difference between flow content and editing. <laughs> because I think there's a lot of people who edit as they go. And I'm a big believer in that. Just, just you're editing out your passion. One of my right. favorite quotes, you've got this, one of my favorite quotes, and you'll love this after the wine comment, right drunk edit sober come on i do i mean i, I mean oh, oh. <laughs> so embarrassing. you've seen me with my harry potter cup come on guys usually it's true i'm kind of disappointed we don't have the harry potter cup today i know i'm not to bubbly there. today it's gonna oh. have to happen later <laughs> it is only monday i suppose um let's be responsible adults <laughs> that's <laughs> overrated <laughs> um, another hour, another hour. Awesome. But this, and this is totally true, right? And this is why, um, like when Shauna and Sarah and Sarah were also sharing the things that are like very feel good for them, right? Like they're showing up just being themselves. There is this, this piece of their personal values that shine. And sometimes like, I, I just love the stark contrast between like, oh, family, family values. Not that I, there's no right or wrong values. I always have to say that. <laughs> I know Lindsay says that too. Um, family values and like challenging beliefs values, right? Like these are both, they can contribute to other humans in such a positive way. That's why there's no like good or bad values. Um, can I add to that, Tracy? Yeah. I just want to add to that, that those two things, people perceive them as being very, very different. They can exist together. Mm -hmm. Like if you've ever had a conversation with me, I'm going to be Miss Mary Poppins, but then I'm going to call you on your BS, okay? Like <laughs> I'm not Miss Nice Guy when if you're going to say something stupid, I'm going to tell you, listen, let's back up, okay? Let's be real with ourselves. Are you lying to me? Are you actually going to show up five times a week? Because I'm telling you right now. <laughs> that, Are you it? going to do the, it in song? I could. <laughs> I could okay, lately. Hey, guys. I've got a ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't know this was going to be a musical. <laughs> what, you should have been prepared. I'm I'm prepared, prepared with that ukulele. She's prepared. <laughs> I'm always prepared. Guys, I'm Mary Poppins. What did I say? <laughs> That's true. I always wished I had that Mary Poppins bag, which is like all the things, whatever she needs. I just want the books. I just want the books. Oh, I'm so good. Have, um sort of I, I don't want to be a wet blanket but I want to go back to that about being yourself um, not only in marketing but as a business owner too um, I was working with a client on a platform who wanted to pull our work 
off the platform and not tell the platform. And I had signed a contract stating explicitly that I would not do that. And so I told this client that I'd worked with, I think this was the fourth or fifth job that she had asked me to do for her. She paid on time, paid my going rate, easy to work for. You know, it was like, I don't want to lose this client. <laughs> but at the same time, if I can't, you know, be honest with myself and sleep at night, then there's no point in working for myself. So I had to tell her, I just didn't feel comfortable with that. And she said, you know, the more I thought about it, I really didn't either. It was on a whim and we are still working together to this day. She's the only client I still have through that platform, but you know, you never know. Sometimes when you show up authentically, it does work out for the best. This is actually, I think sometimes too, people are afraid of exactly that so thank you so much for sharing that Amy be like oh no but if I stand up for this and what are they going to think and I'm going to lose this client I really don't want to lose this client but like we've all had I think we've all had that too right we're like seriously if I like I can't or even when you see some things other people do and you're like how do they sleep at night (laughs) like I don't I don't understand um and this is also based on your values, right? Like it really does come back to the values of saying like, you know what? Like I contracted to this. I believe in the contract that I signed. I don't have enough reason to like fight against that. And so I I put my name on something to begin with and then not abide by what I agreed to. Mm -hmm. That's just, I felt like, you know, the, the moral thing to do. This is what I like to call owning your personal brand. (laughs) (laughs) You got to be authentic. Yeah, well, it's you taking a stand. Yes, yes. Amen, Michelle. Authenticity. (laughs) It's about you taking stands for what you believe. It's about showing up and saying what you believe. It's about commenting what you believe it's about doing the action of what you believe and I think like Amy full props to you because that is a hard thing and that's a vulnerable thing but you ultimately stood in this is what I believe in as did the client Mm -hmm. ultimately and you gave her that permission to be like you know what you're right I was not standing in my authentic truth right in a roundabout way Sorry, I'm like, I, think, Amy, like, I was yeah. I was battling the storm. There's a big storm down here and I was battling the storm. I'm like, I gotta get on here. <laughs> You've been, you haven't been disappointed, have you, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> I've never disappointed me on the panel. <laughs> never disappointed by a Tracy panel. Nope. <laughs> but this is you guys, this is what I, I just want to talk about this for a little bit because it might seem like a small thing what Amy did and what Lindsay just said, but this is about creating a space for not just yourself to be authentic, but for other people to give themselves the permission to be authentic, which is a hundred percent why we have this panel here Mm -hmm. today, right? It's about giving you guys the permission to do you in your marketing. And you don't, you're not supposed to be anything different than you are. You're not supposed to make contract decisions against your gut feeling. You're not supposed to show up and try and write a blog post that doesn't have your values at the core, right? It's, it's not, a, if, if, if you look, and I can say this too, as a parent, right? Like if you look at your kids and you experience this like amazing moment of joy, and like, quite honestly, I see this all the time. I have a three-year-old son and like, I am so proud of how the world hasn't stomped his personal brand out of him yet. And I celebrate, <laughs> I celebrate that every day and I watch him do things and I'm amazed. And that yeah. is part of me as a human. So why would I then just be like, oh no, no one's gonna care about that on social media. Like there will be people who don't care about that. Mm-hmm. Right. Social- they just really wanna see that gossip. Do. Exactly, exactly. There's I'm always going to be. <laughs> and I'm glad you talked about that, Tracy, because it's very hard not being yourself. I mean, I've actually tried it a couple of times, try to be like the person in the box that everyone wants you to be. And I'm like, 
mm, I can't do that. I got to be the bright, bubbly Michelle. I got to be the one that you can, you can feel comfortable to come to and speak to. <laughs> and um, don't worry about me judging you because if I start judging you, then I'm just another typical person on the outside looking in. So if I'm going to be myself, then that would be make sure that I'm giving you that utmost respect, that utmost respect. It's about being authentic. It's about being unique. It's about being genuine and not misjudging another person. Because once you start doing that, then you've changed. You've changed from what the world wants you to be. And that's not fair. Mm-hmm. So true. So true, Michelle. And I think one of the other things I want to add in there is that so there's words. So the words that Michelle used to describe herself are bright and bubbly. <laughs> your, your words, I would use those same words to describe Michelle. Um, <laughs> that, that's what they told me. They're like, oh, you're like the light of the party. You just bright as bubbly. What did you eat last night? What do you eat today? I'm like, I don't drink coffee. I don't drink sodas. It's just me. I'm just, uh, just how I am. This is what water does for you, people. Um, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Drink healthy and be yourself in your copy. Um, No, but the point I'm trying to make is- Do what Lindsay said. Do what Lindsay said. Depression, (laughs) constipation. Get rid of that depression, that constipation and be yourself. (laughs) Poop it out. We could have a whole episode on the benefits of water. (laughs) How it can help you be yourself. It's true. Um, But anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that not everybody is bright and bubbly right? Like if you wouldn't describe yourself as bright and bubbly, you don't have to show up as bright and bubbly. And one of the things I know that my clients often struggle with, like I, this is the thing that quite honestly breaks my heart the most when I hear people be like, oh, I just need to be more like you. And I'm like, "Uh, no, eh, wrong. Mm -mm. You don't need to be any bit like me. You need to be like you. For yep. one, if we're competing on clients and my clients like me, I'm going to beat you every time because I'm actually me and you're just pretending to be me. <laughs> so that is a waste of everybody's time, right? You're, you might be attracted to me as like, as me to be your coach because of how I am, but your people are attracted to you for a different reason. Right. They're not attracted to you for that same reason. So there's never never a point where you're supposed to be more like someone else. And it's hard. It's hard to break that narrative, especially like I know I grew up with sisters, right. And I'm lucky I'm the oldest, but my youngest sister, like lots of times has said like, Oh, I just need to be more like Tracy or more like Alana, my middle sister. And like, no, someone needed to tell her no (laughs) and say, you just need to be like Kayla. And that's, because that's who you're supposed to be. The others are already taken, right? Like you, yeah. you can't be them. Yeah, if so. you're going to try and be them, then you're just being a copy of them. And all of your value is in, like, I know Shauna loves to speak about owning your originality, right? All of your, all of your value is in you being original. So you're just actually erasing that for the world. And that's your good contribution to the world that's your your pinnacle of contribution to the world is being yourself and you're erasing that to be someone else who already exists they're already making their contribution we don't need another one of them no we We need you and then you'll just break trust because when someone does call you to connect with you and you show up because because you're bright and bubbly and they're expecting this like calm relaxed <laughs> version of tell me tell me let's go for it right there's this break in trust tell me about yourself tell me tell me <laughs> but, but, like, but seriously and that's the same like with me is when I was very corporate in my speak and people get on the phone with me and there's some chick who's bursting out puns all over the place like it's very disconnecting so it's a huge thing is we have to show up online as we do in person. So we don't break that trust when we come in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. person. Talk to Mm -hmm. people about that all the time, especially Mm -hmm. when they're using cuss words, because people are very hesitant to use cussing in their, in their, in their written dialogue. And I always say, okay, well, but if you're showing up as Martha Stewart and then you come in there as Snoop Dogg, we're going to have some conflict here. Okay. We need to make sure that you're showing up as yourself each and every single time. I'm not going to drop the F bomb all the time. So I'm not going to write it into my content, but if you are, do it 
Like I would be mm-hmm. so surprised if you were legitimately avoiding every single cuss word and you were just, just so, and then you show up and you're, you're dropping all sorts of bonds in my conversation. I'd be like, Oh my goodness, did you have a bad day? <laughs> like, <laughs> <you're surprised. laughs> but, but no, truly though, like be yeah. consistent and be who you are in, in all as aspects. If you want to swear, then freaking swear. If you don't want to swear, then don't. It's okay. I say, ah, oh, sugar all the time. I also loved Lindsay's. Oh my golly. That was beautiful. <laughs> well, my, <laughs> oh my golly. I said fudge. Yeah. yeah. Fudge. I say fudge. But if you're going to drop the big one, then do it. Don't yes. a lot of oh, Amy, we got we got a connection here. Fudge. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you're gonna make a connection with another human. <laughs> yeah. We just okay. the other I day wanna, too. <laughs> I want to take this into a part of the conversation though, because when like we talk a lot about consistency when we're talking about copyright, um, and a there's, I still think there's a lot of confusion in the market between consistency and frequency. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sarah, I'd love to get your perspective again, specifically, because I'm going to focus on LinkedIn. Um, t- let's talk about consistency versus frequency. Sure. Um, I'll start with like, there are best practices for like the industry and that's mostly frequency. That's the post on Instagram three times per week, post on LinkedIn at least twice per week, but don't post every day or else some other posts will like get outshone because you know, the algorithm only shows like one or two posts per week that do really well, et cetera. Frequency I feel is more industry best practices. If you want to stay sane, focus on consistency. And what that means is whatever you can sustain like realistically if you can only post once per week do that and do it really fucking well gonna pop drop a bomb because i put them in my copy (laughs) don't worry i'll put that this episode is not for children yeah thank you (laughs) because you know if you can do it really well then do what you do really well really well and if that's once per week then that's once per week if you want to challenge yourself to put out a piece of content every day for a month do that you know but don't like think you have to do industry best practices when you have a full-time job you're a parent and you're doing freelancing on the side it no it's not gonna happen you know so I think um I honestly I think it was like Lindsay who touched on this like don't or no no Sean like don't lie to me don't lie to me about the consistency that you can actually do when realistically we both know you have emergencies happening every other day try for two times per week and then ramp up if you can so I think that goes for any platform blogging social media newsletters like literally anything if you have an industry best practice that you know you can't reach, don't get caught up in that. Just focus on what you can do and then focus on making that the best it can be. Really good, yeah. yeah. How about you, Amy? We're gonna give Amy a chance to talk. She just comes in and drops big bombs and then we go all nuts. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. That was so great, I love that. That's, the, that's some good jam, I had to write that down. You have to remind me of the question though. I got caught up in what Sarah was talking about. <laughs> We're just talking about consistency versus frequency. Versus frequency. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, my, my Facebook page is like the cobbler's children without shoes. I swear. I know what to do and I can direct other people to do it. I can do a content strategy with them for their product or service. You know, the whole nine yards. And I've got mine mapped out. I'm awful about it. Just awful about it. Um, I do post at least two or three times a week, um, but there's no consistent rhyme or reason to it like there should be. Um, And I'm working on changing that going forward because my objective has changed. For the first year, six months or a year or so, it was just getting my name out there and getting to know people and know whether or not they were a warm market. Are you interested in, you know, working with me or you just join the group because you know me and you want to be nice? Because I appreciate that, but that doesn't really help, you know. So now my focus is going to be geared in a completely different direction where it's going to be to narrow that group into people who really want to be there, who are truly interested in learning how to write copy and that kind of thing. Um, So I agree with what Sarah was saying as far as the frequency. it, It really doesn't seem to matter as much. 
as being consistent. Because if I go, I went one time for almost two weeks without posting anything and I heard from it. I heard about it from a lot of people. You know, we were worried about you. We thought something had happened to yeah. you because you didn't post anything for two weeks. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, I didn't know. Like, whoa, yeah. I was on vacation. I went, out of town. <laughs> went out of town, left the computer at home, didn't think about it. And yeah, so. I bet that felt really good to though. Know. I was gonna say that I'm actually missing, nice. They miss you. Really yeah, nice to be I've challenged about. people yeah. in my. I used to do personal branding, just like little mini workshops, and I always would ask people. In one of my workshops, I had the uh, the lady who always comments on my blog every single time I write a blog. She comments, she likes, and whatever. And the week before, I hadn't written a blog because I was getting ready for the workshop, and so I asked her. I'm like, "Hey, did you see my blog?" last week and she is like yeah and I'm like no you didn't I didn't write a blog last week. Oh, no. <laughs> boom the point I'm trying no. to make is that <laughs> we're so often we think that if we miss a day or we miss two days that the world is going to notice and like I don't know about you guys but I've I've followed people on LinkedIn I don't actually, I think I said this to Lindsay last week. She was like, oh no, I didn't do a listening video because they always come out on Mondays. And I was like, I always watch your listening videos. I had no idea they only came out on Mondays. <laughs> yep. I, didn't I didn't know realize. either. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's, it, it's not that the content, like, yeah, if you disappeared for a significant amount of time, people might notice, but if you miss a day or two days yeah. because you're feeling sick or like your kid broke their arm and you just like, just, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Or and you're this just is not feeling up to it. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a traumatic reason why you're not. Behave, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is an important point. This is an important point because it, like something I always like to share, I run a messaging mastermind. And so something that I always share with my people in there is that you don't, right? And I don't do that either. So you guys, here's here's what ha here's how I do things. I have a, a fancy Excel calendar. That's my cop, my content calendar. I have ideas in every day because I have all the ideas and I write them down. And I pop them in the calendar once a month, and then I come to a day and I look at the calendar and I'll be like, Meh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, maybe, <laughs> maybe if I like it, still I'll write it. But like, mm -hmm. I think. 30% of the time, maybe I use it. Um, I mostly write off the top of my head. And if I don't have anything that's like top of mind value driving today, I don't post it. <laughs> and sometimes I do a video and sometimes I do written and sometimes I have a picture and sometimes I make my own picture on Canva. And I don't have like one way that I do content. I let, how does this content feel like coming out today? And I let it come out. Like I actually have a post I didn't write today because it's too long. LinkedIn has a, a, a limit of how many words you can write. And so I was like, oh, this is way too long. And then sometimes ah, I'm like, mm, <laughs> can I just make it shorter? And then I was like, no, I'm just going to take it and turn it into a blog post because I have more to say about this. Um, mm -hmm. So you can stay tuned for that blog post, which was not a post today and will be a blog post later this week. Um, but there, there's... <laughs> It's really important to give yourself the grace to post, especially when you're looking at this conversation about frequency versus consistency, right? So like, could I post today? Sure, I could post today. Am I posting something that I feel good about posting today? If the answer is no, then my recommendation is just don't. Right. <laughs> because that is what hurts your consistency and consistency feel, feeds your personal brand and your online reputation a lot more than frequency. So yes, the algorithm likes to play with frequency, but even then I had a, I have a client that reached out to me the other day. She was like, Oh, what happened to you? Like, I'm not seeing your posts anymore. And I'm like, it must be an algorithm thing because I haven't like changed the amount of posting that I'm doing. And like, this is a client of mine. We've communicate wow. often and all of a sudden the algorithm says don't show you Tracy stuff like I don't control the algorithm so I can only do what I can do and then so she went in and looked at a whole bunch of other things and <laughs> now she's back in the algorithm right like the algorithm is the platform's game it's not your game and that. pardon oh, me I love that so much 
Yeah, I actually, and, and everything is like, it, it's, I actually do a spiel about this, which makes me really happy about like, I could talk to you, people ask me, okay, come in and talk to me about, um, you know, content strategy with regard to social media. And they, they're expecting algorithm talk always, every single time. And I say, hey guys, we're not talking about the algorithm today because I could talk to you about the algorithm until my face turns blue and tomorrow we'll have something new to say. No, we want to talk about something that is going to be meaningful for many, 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 many days into the future. We want something that you can use now and every day moving forward. We're going to talk about consistency. So I love this. Topic. <laughs> <laughs> I always talk about, it's true. We're always like, and then, you know, you get the, you get the, oh, I'm all consistent. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, listen, there are so many aspects of consistency. You've got the who, what, where, why, when, and how of consistency. And when I describe it to people, I always use the plant analogy because I like gardening. And it's all about just every single element of the plant being an element of being consistent, who you are, how you show up, where you show up and when you show up are very important. Those are the frequency elements, right? Um, and then you've got the why, when, et cetera. I think it's the when and they all add up to consistency in all aspects of your business. And it's really, <laughs> really, really important that you're showing up consistently within and around yourself because right. that's what people feed into. That's what people resonate with. Mm -hmm. so yes, I just, I just love this. I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. I'm chugging along. Let's go. And that's what gets put <laughs> to the test a <laughs> with the client too. Yeah. <laughs> Shauna's going to pull out the ukulele any minute. I, I, it's, been, it's been She's on my lap the whole time, guys. I'm just like... <laughs> How are we not here yet? <laughs> I'm just ready for it. We're going to have just like an interlude at the end. <laughs> it's a little random kumbaya at the end we'll all hold hands hopefully <laughs> hand, I, you know I can do some Ingrid Michelson for you maybe I mean it, it would work smash mouth I think I can do smash can mouth can I do like <laughs> I caught some jazz fingers and oh, yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> something I also like to talk about when it comes algorithmically as well mm -hmm. again I completely agree with Shauna of like I could talk 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 and then I would have something new to say tomorrow I love that um I like to challenge people all the time with, if you have a good piece of content, it doesn't matter where you post it because a good piece of content is gonna resonate with people no matter how you show up. Obviously there's different pieces of content that do well. You can't put written stuff on YouTube, sorry. But like, you know, if you, I've seen LinkedIn posts become Facebook ads and make that person a crap load of money, you know, and then become like a Facebook group post and make them a crap load of money organically. You know, like if you have a good piece of content and you have very similar audiences as I feel like you should, if you're being consistent in that who, what, why, where, how, can, do, when, all that. Um, then it's going to resonate pretty much the end of it. Absolutely. Okay. Because we have just been a, a chatty mm -hmm. McChat chat bunch today. Um, anybody who's watching who has any questions? <laughs> you got four minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Four minutes to ask good questions. Me? So we've got a couple people watching on Facebook. So if you guys have questions on Facebook, pop them into the comments. I will share them with the panel and Michelle joining us live. Do you have anything that you would love to ask to our panel today? It's about the consistency. I was listening to what Sarah was saying and she had me here taking so much notes right now. I'm afraid to say Shauna because she's about to bring out the ukulele, but in any event. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm you know, like, you have, Stop it. I need so, to have a ukulele on every show now. <laughs> so my thing is I want to be able to monetize my content like when I put up a post or maybe I wrote a blog because I wrote a blog and I don't know how to monetize it so that's something I'm trying to do research on and see how to get it done so and one of the panel can give me a quick step on how I could do that because before before you answer the the blog is actually on my dream rise life empowerment website which is my um my life coaching website so that's where I put it I put it in there somewhere so I need to get it monetized. So how do I get it done? It comes back to the call to action always. The call to action has to resonate with the story. It has to be very actionable, duh. Um, but in a way that's not like too soft. So for example, if you see a button that says, learn more, 
you don't really know where that button's taking you. You could kind of guess, but you don't know exactly why you're clicking that button or if it's going to take you to like a contact page or a blog page or a white paper or a, a webinar. Like you don't know where you're going. So depending on the piece of content and for a blog, I'd say mm -hmm. be more specific than not. Um, have the call to action be schedule a call or have the, the call to action be if you are a person that wants to have X transformation by doing Y action, let's talk. Very, very specific. Um, does anyone else have something to say about that? Um, I would say to your world. I'm sorry, Shauna. Sorry, sorry you... Amy, I was just totally sub commenting on Sarah. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't want to hear the sub comment. I just said, I said, that's perfect. Invite people into your world. That's all I said. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. I, I'm feeling you. It's good. Um, we got to reach out and touch Sarah in a minute. <laughs> I would say. But I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, the, sorry. I'm sorry, Amy. The, the call okay. to action was how to pay off your student loan. I, I, it's actually circulated on Google. I paid off my student loan in seven months nice. and I wrote a blog on how to do it step by step by step. So now I just need to get it monetized. Break it into smaller chunks and use those in different places so that you're repurposing your content for one and so that you're building a warm audience in stages. You don't have to get them all at once in one blog. Okay, you might want to do an advertorial that leads them to the directs them to the blog, which then puts them on your website and you want to market and you know, you want to track for one thing. Once you start doing any sort of, of getting yourself out there, you need to track what's doing well and what's not doing well. And sometimes that's going to hit hard in the heart and you have to pull the things that you just fell in love with, but if they're not working, they're not working. So when you think about monetizing, always think about tracking because you need to track from the very first thing you do and always put out two different two different things at the same time so you can get a feel for one thing working better than the other. So I can and compare, yes. And over time yes. with your okay. content, you'll get a feel for, okay, this type of story works really, really well. And this one, they don't really care about. Mm. <laughs> you know, even though it's near, dear, my, near and dear to my heart, my audience doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So... But break it into smaller chunks and use it everywhere because you don't have to sell them all in one fell swoop. You can warm them up piece by piece by piece and lead them from an advertorial to the blog, to your sales page, to this, to that. You can lead them through the, right, the way that you want them to go. And in that through too, within the blog, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the different chunks, you can <clears throat> put multiple call to actions in the blog. You'll see it all the time. People have one like right at the beginning, in the middle, maybe after a really strong quote, and then all the way at the end. So don't don't wait yeah. till just the end because people are not everyone's getting there. Right. Especially <laughs> depending on the length of the blog. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, and if there's specific sections of the step by step as well, you know, someone may not need help until a very specific section and they want, I want to act right now. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. They may not know about the other ones and all of a sudden they're reading the other steps, which might scare them off. So that's right. a great point is you've got these beautiful step-by-steps, highlight the different steps to, because you'll be meeting people at different sure spots on their journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you. Well, okay, I, so I did it when I was just starting out. I didn't know what I was doing. So now I'm good. <laughs> well, a couple other things that I just want to mention on that is there is also a process of getting people to the website, right? So a lot of times we think websites just stand on their own and everybody just will go there. <laughs> they don't? No. <laughs> Lindsay, stop. <laughs> don't do that voice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the voice. You guys, we have not even touched the range of Lindsay's voices today. You don't even know. You think oh, she's man. a values vixen? She's a voice vixen. Yeah. <laughs> I help with Good values, day. voice, yeah. and clarity. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever type of voices you want, yeah. generally. <laughs> the but this is, it's an important thing to remember because we it's a whole journey for your clients, right? So like what is taking them to 
the article. So if we're only going to assume that a Google search for X is going to lead them to the article, and if I Google search for that, I'm ranked on page five, then they're not going to find you that way. Right? right. And so I tell people this all the time about my website. There are two reasons why people go to my website. One, to read my blog because I told them to go and read my blog there <laughs> or two to buy something because I told them to go to my website to buy something. <laughs> so it's always based on me telling them to go there for a reason. Right. And that like, there's always random people. Cause I, you know, I, I, every time I say this and I'm like, no one goes to your website without you sending them there. And then I get a random person signed up for my newsletter and you're like, Oh yeah. Well. But those people <laughs> don't turn into clients. Right? Like right. It, or if they do it, it takes a really long time to turn them into a client. So that's having that relationship with a person and then sending them. So like, Michelle, if you have a conversation with somebody who's struggling to pay off a student loan, then send them to your blog and be like, oh, this could totally help you pay off your student loan. And then at the end of the blog or whatever throughout the blog, you have the call to action, right? So they have a reason to go there. They have a reason to stay and read the article because they've talked to you and you've given them a reason because your bright and bubbly self showed up and made them feel something. And then they have, there's a greater likelihood that they'll take that call to action. So it's, it's, we have to, and a lot of people too think like, well, the only way to get people there is ads. No, it's not the only way to get people there. Have a conversation. I did this in the comments on LinkedIn the other day. Someone, I can't, I can't even remember what someone was talking about. And I like to use this analogy of emotions as traffic lights. So red, green, and yellow. And I wrote a blog post about it. And so I was in this conversation. I used that example. And she was like, oh, can you tell me more about this? And I was like, my blog can tell you more about this. <laughs> and here's the link to my blog. Because it's, I mean, I'm going to copy and paste the blog into the comments. Here's the link to my blog, <laughs> read my blog. And then people like binge read your blog. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I love everything about you. And you're like, oh, great. Just because in one comment, I sent you to my blog, right? So just think about to what gets people there. And if it's you, then the likelihood of them consuming the content is much higher. Um, one of the last things I want to do, and I do recognize that we are over, so thanks for everybody hanging in with us for a few extra minutes today, um, is this concept of the call to action. And especially when it comes to social media, um, I, like Shauna, like to look at it as an invitation. And if I have just written a piece of content that means something to you, which again, I don't know in advance, only the reader can give it meaning. If it means something to you and I don't give you a call to action, I'm leaving you in the lurch. You wanted to do more with that information and I have not allowed you to do that. That's not really fair to the consumer yes. of the information. So my job is to write that content as if the person who gets to the end of it, if, if let all of us think this, right? Same thing with a book or whatever content you read. If you get all the way to the end of it, you cared enough to read the whole thing. If you cared enough to read the whole thing, you probably found value in it. You might find more value in it if I give you an invitation to do more with that. If I give an invitation to someone who didn't care about that in the first place, I'm not hurting my chances because they didn't care about it in the first place. <laughs> right? The post didn't have value. The blog didn't have value. And therefore the call to action doesn't have value. That's fine. But I need to assume that there are people that are going to follow this path and I am creating value as I go. And if I cut them off from value, does that feel authentic? Right? Like now I'm saying like, I could help you, but I'm not going to, <laughs> right? Like, would you do that? in person because most people wouldn't. Um, and we do it in our content all the time because we think like, oh, this is a educational post or this is a value post or this is whatever on our, like we have to have this percentage of this type of post and this percentage of this type of post, all these silly rules, which I think are silly. <laughs> um, but so we don't, we don't make a call to action but then we stop, we stop helping our people and if we were in person, we wouldn't stop helping our people, right? Like if you no, were we having that conversation with someone in person and they were like so into it and like, oh my God, this is exactly the help I need. You'd be and like, you're like, bye. Right. <laughs> That's the worst. That's not authentic, right? Like, and so again, it's just this looking at these scenarios in our writing 
And we didn't really talk about like email content today because we talked about a bajillion other things, but the concepts are the same, right? Like you get to the end of an, an email, call to action. Don't send an email without a call to action. <laughs> like what's the, what's the point? What was the point of that email? If you created a whole bunch of value, give them a way to get more of that value. And maybe it is just follow you on social media or whatever. There's no one right call to action to use at the time, but I always like to say, give them a call to action to take the next step. What's the next step they could do, right? Like, I don't know, in, in, in paying off your student loans, it might be download the spreadsheet that I use to help you, right? Like, that, that's a call to action. That's an invitation to do another thing. Oh, you're actually, I can now tell that you're interested in this step. So you are more interested than other people, right? Now I can follow up with you and be like, hey, how did that spreadsheet go did you have questions did it actually help like can it help you like oh Download all of a sudden a spreadsheet in exchange for an email because now you yes yeah. <laughs> well and this is the thing right and I, I'm mm-hmm. sure I'm sure all of us have downloaded something at some point and, and they always ask me for you spread for your email address yeah I'm like right hmm. well and if you want it enough you trade your data <laughs> I've always <laughs> I've always believed this, right? And uh, the company I used to work for did, did voice marketing. So they were always trying to get someone's phone number. Um, and phone number is harder to give away than email address, right? Because like, let's be honest, I have an email address that is specifically for freebies. <laughs> I just get the freebie and then all of the junk goes there and I don't read anything else, right? I have an email specifically for that. A lot of people do. Um, it's not hard to give away an email address. So if you're not gonna give away an email address, you probably don't care at all (laughs) about doing this thing. You definitely don't care enough to pay somebody to help you with it, right? So this is the other thing that we're trying to just work through in our journey is for our, is for us to understand what is this relationship that other people want to have with us, right? Like I, I can't possibly serve all people. And if I try to serve all people, then I don't know who I'm actually serving, right? So this is what these, all of these stages are for, for me to see okay, this, this is the group of people that need my help right now that want to pay to do it. And again, I want to, just for all the freelancers who are watching, because there's a lot of conversations around like pricing and we're going to, there's going to be a whole different episode on pricing. So that's a new whole different episode. (laughs) Um, But when it comes to that, just think of, I always, Mm. I'll tell you, I always think of it based on how many Starbucks it is. (laughs) So how many Starbucks do I have to trade a month to get X, right? Like how many Starbucks is that? Because to me, Starbucks is a thing I buy because I want it. You don't need it. I choose to spend my money on that. So would I rather choose to spend my money on something different or not? And sometimes people will be like, what, you would rather spend your money on Starbucks and get a financial coach? Well, today, yeah, that's the decision I wanna make. I can't control other people making that decision, but I can tell them that there's an option for them to spend their Starbucks money over here at the Your Business Peeps community. (laughs) Just saying, (laughs) it's like five Starbucks a month. (laughs) Pretty good deal. Um, If people are looking for this. (laughs) Oh no, here we go, Lindsay. (laughs) (laughs) But this is the thing, this is just the point, right? So like somebody who was looking for a place to practice being their authentic self, who was like, oh, I could trade five Starbucks a month for that win. But like, not everybody is going to do that, right? Not everybody is looking for that. Not everybody is looking for whatever help we provide, right? Coaching, copywriting, you name it, doesn't matter. Um, Not everybody is looking for that. But unless we help people, help us, help them, right? I got to help myself in the process too and figure out who are those people that want my help because there's lots of people who need my help (laughs) but there's only a few people who have decided they want my help and I need to work with those people first (laughs) the thing is how to get them 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like we could just keep talking about this forever. Yeah, um, but I also to want to continue. <laughs> yes, there. Just so you guys know, if this is the first permission to do you in your marketing episode that you have caught, this is actually the sixth episode. There are five episodes that already live on YouTube, so you guys can go check it out um, on the TLB Coaching YouTube channel. Um, Actually, I don't, I think it maybe it's called permission to do you. I think I was smart like that and just called it permission to do you. Um, so if you search for that, you should be able to find it or contact me directly and I can send you a link, always an option. Um, and they happen monthly. So next month we are going to have another lovely panel of guests talking about permission to do you in your marketing in a different way. Um, so by the end of this year, there will have been one every month for this year. And you're going to have this beautiful repertoire of how you can do you into marketing and we're always going to be learning new things so I'm sure we'll just keep doing it because it's also really fun and you never know when ukuleles might show up uh, exactly well what do you think Shauna you want to give me a little strum while yeah I, yeah, yeah go go. Ahead, Shana. oh yeah I could kind just of sing the wrap up what, what yeah. are you going to sing I don't know For all of my guests today, there are Amy, Lindsay, Shauna, and Michelle. We talked all about your copy. copy, and now you're gonna <laughs> go away and do you? Ooh. I don't know. Not the best way to finish, but you know. <laughs> Love it. I'm not a professional <laughs> singer for a reason, but if you ever want to hang out at karaoke, let me know. Well, at least I'm you down. didn't go soprano. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was, I was singing too much Queen on my car trip this week. Oh, I wrote it. I know. Just oh, Sam Lindsay can sing. Free. I know. And just like the just high, but like clearly off key. It's all good. Um, anyway, thank you guys so, so much for sharing your lovely intellect and feelings with us today. It was so wonderful. You guys, I'm going to put links. Um, or if you're watching live and you want the contact information for any of our guests today, it is in the comments. So you can feel free to grab that um, if you're on the Zoom. Um, and if not, I have tagged them all in posts so you can go and follow them as well and I will be putting the recording of this event on YouTube in the LinkedIn event and also in the Facebook event so you guys will have lots of places to find it it's also on my Facebook profile um, so you can just find it there at your leisure um, and until next time permission to do you have a good night everybody bye, bye. bye.